Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Holy Week. <laughs> I'm going to tell you where to start in the book because as if, if I hope you remember, it actually starts in a different way um, today for our Palm Sunday. So the number you see there at the reading, 1035, is for the, the liturgy of the word itself. The beginning starts at number 1031. So it would be good if you just open to that toward the back at number 1031 32. and begins no, 31. 1031 and we'll begin with an antiphon that you'll see there and then the gospel and then Father will bless branches during the opening song. So be sure that you have gotten your palms and hold those nice and high. So again, number 1031. We'll begin in just a moment. Let us rise and face the back of the church. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. sisters and brothers, we have, since the beginning of Lent until now, have been preparing our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is saying, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem, Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Let's raise our palm branches for the blessing. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem and to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside of the city and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought it, the colt to Jesus, and they put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the ground, on the road, and others spread leafy branches.
branches, and they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna! 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, like the crowds who accompany Jesus to Jerusalem, let us go forth now, waving our palm branches for the blessing of the branches as we go forth in peace. Please join in singing number 498, All Glory, Loud and Honor, number 498. and ever-living God, 
who as an example of humility for the human race to follow caused your only son to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled. I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and then 
descendants of Jacob give glory to him. My, my God, God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, not during, Not during the festival, festival for, for fear, fear that, that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why have there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you take trouble for her, make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, whenever the proclaim to the whole world, what she has done will be told in her memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, 
one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, For the Son of Man indeed goes, and is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take this, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, with which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, They went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, All things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, 
Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi! And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but with that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with a Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council.
hospital. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He He saved saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, look, he is is calling Elijah. Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joses, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. They, there were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Ar Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Oses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we may wonder why Jesus entered that holy city. I've wondered about it many times. And I, why did he enter Jerusalem knowing what he knew? I can imagine what I would have done. What would you have done? I'm sure I wouldn't have done exactly what Jesus did. I would have found a way out, probably. Changed my story, softened my words, probably. Told people it was just a big mistake stayed far away. Now I can't imagine riding into that city that day knowing what was about to await me. And I guess you could say my feelings are completely understandable. As a human being, our instinct is always to protect ourselves, isn't it? To keep ourselves from harm, to avoid pain, to truly do all we can to protect our life. We look for ways to make our lives a little easier every day. We look for the comfortable. We look for the easy, the less painful. Most of us do all we can to keep ourselves out of harm's way. And those of us that don't do that, that have to be in harm's way for a living, we praise them because they do that for us in service to our country and to our very beautiful communities they serve. We're grateful. But truthfully, most of us, and I think the vast majority of us, probably would never have entered that city of Jerusalem. But Jesus did. Jesus did. I think there's a temptation for us to presume that Jesus had conflicted about this, that it was an easy decision for him to make that his divinity somehow shielded him from the impulses of humanity. I don't think that was the case at all. In fact, Scripture tells us that Jesus prayed that night before in a particular way that that cup would pass him by. He prayed that there could be a different path. No, his humanity did not disappear during his passion. It was there still for all of us to see. And unlike Jesus, Jesus' humanity did not pose an obstacle for the will of his Father to be lived out through him. His humanity didn't overpower his divinity. 
Rather, the two came together, in a sense, perfectly, and revealed to us a fullness of both natures, working together, of both his humanity and his divinity, a oneness of everything God is and everything that all of us are called to be. We look on this Jesus with awe, and I think rightly so, because we know as people of faith that we owe him an immense sense of gratitude. We owe him our love. We owe him our obedience. We owe him absolutely everything. Our whole selves. Yet what Jesus showed us perfectly is not meant for him alone, is it? It's what each of us is called to do too. Each of us is called to be a person willing to give our will to the Father. We can be people whose individual wills don't push us against God's will, but instead work with God's will, willingly, faithfully, trustingly, and not begrudgingly. And when I think we do that, we allow God truly in a way to live in us in a way never before. We find ourselves willing, I think, to do the hard things, the difficult things in life, the scary things that many of us have been faced to do. In other words, we might just have the courage to enter the holy city with Jesus rather than to turn our head the other direction and walk away. Today, as Cheryl began saying welcome to Holy Week to us, the beginning of this week, this is the Holy of Weeks for us as church. And Jesus will walk a path most of us would never have chose. But let's not let the Lord walk alone. Let's journey with him up that hill of Calvary to Golgotha, trusting that God's way is always the best. And may we do the same with each small Calvary that comes our way in life because they keep coming on this journey we're on. They do. And when loving seems a little too hard, when forgiving feels a little too hard, or showing mercy or compassion feels a little too hard, well, that's not just fall into our humanity. Let's hear other voices telling us to be more like Jesus. Jesus who every single day, every single moment did the will of the Father. That's the one inviting us to choose a different path, a different vision, a different way of living. Don't worry, my dear people, we're never going to be alone. In all this, we know that. Let's reinvigorate our faith this most holy week of weeks. Let's not stay home when we have Mass on Holy Thursday, when we celebrate Good Friday and Easter. We can always watch TV. We can always do a project later, watch a sports show. We can always do those other things at other times. Let's take these few hours to be with Jesus in prayer, here with our brothers and sisters of faith. Not allowing Jesus to walk alone, but to walk with all of us by his side. We can make this a blessed week. We can. As church, as a family, reinvigorating our faith and choosing to walk with him. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we bring before you our prayers today as we begin this most holiest of weeks. That all Christians may embrace the joy of this holy week with a commitment to repent of past sins and strive for holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That church leaders may proclaim with courage and conviction the gospel of Christ crucified. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may reflect the sovereignty of Christ as they work to eliminate unnecessary suffering from their countries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the crucifixion of Christ for all people may teach us that there is no such thing as a worthless life or a person God does not love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those preparing to enter the church this Easter may be protected from evil and grow in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died may find everlasting joy in the Father's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Frank Majak, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your personal intentions that you have brought to this Holy Week, please mention them now to our Lord in your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of each other, for the faith that we all have in you, for you have brought us here today to begin this most holy week in union with your Son. Bless us in our first faith journeys as we continue try, to try to be more like Jesus in how he gave his will to you, the Father. Help us to daily make sacrifices that are big and small, so that we can show the world that we are like your son, willing to give our lives too for others, willing to give our very self so others may live. Answer the prayers we bring before you today as we begin this holy week. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you are now seated, our ushers come forward accepting your gifts. Thank you, people of God, for the blessings you always bring to this parish of St. Philip Neri that we love. Thank you. Please join in singing number 512, O Sacred Head Surrounded, number 512. Thank you. 
Pray, my dearest sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all those churches. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for us sinners and accepted unjust condemnation, to save the guilty. His death washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels and saints of heaven, we praise you, and in joyful celebration, we all acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you extend to sinners. He is the way of your peace that is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord. 
so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for your our sake handed himself over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, by whose command we fulfill these mysteries we celebrate. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, He reclined at table. He himself took bread into his sacred hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing into his hands and confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, that in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from you and one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people and keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Jeff, our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now around the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, apostles, with St. Philip Neri, and all the saints, with Frank Majak, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them together the unending banquet of unity, in a new heaven, in a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, the Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. 
Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Shall we offer each other Christ's love and his peace? Behold, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. John, the body of Christ. Distribute the blood of Christ. Distribute the body, body of Christ. Share all the body of Christ. Of Christ, Dan. Distribute the body of Christ, Bill. Please join in singing number 491, Jesus the Lord, number 491. Grishana, the body of Christ.
martyrs of the body of Christ. Linda, the body of Christ. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection may you lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
and reminders as we go forth beginning this Holy Week. First off, we want all of you to know that training for new extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, the altar and homebound and, and sick and recertification is happening. Cheryl, as our faith formation director, is going to be doing all that, so please contact her if you would like to be a minister of Holy Communion. Thank you, Kathleen Parsika, for making our wonderful soup this weekend and leading us from the Stations of the Cross. Thank you so very much. We still need a few more people to sign up for washing their feet on Holy Thursday. This is the third week. My gosh, isn't there anyone that have feet out there? They have washed, huh? So um, we need a few more people. So the bulletin stands, you'll see there, there are a lot of spaces yet. So please help me out. Please help me out for Holy Thursday, or I'll have to come and grab you someplace, okay? And get you, okay? Rice bowls can be turned in at the basket by St. Philip Neri statue anytime during Holy Week. Holy Week schedule has been given to you many times, but just as a reminder, Holy Thursday is at 7 p.m. Good Friday at 1 p.m. Easter Vigil, that's the Saturday Mass, it will not be at 4 o'clock, but at, tell me everyone, 8 o'clock, okay? You won't, no one will be here if you come at 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock, okay, on Saturday. Uh, Easter Sunday at St. Rita's is at 8 o'clock in the morning, the sunrise one, and then St. Philip's here at 10 a.m. on Easter. And uh, next Saturday, Empire is going to have its uh, Easter egg hunt, which we are so much part of all with the Methodist Church and the community, and that starts at noon? Uh, noon time? 11.30. starts at 11.30. You're all welcome to come and watch the kids uh, do their Easter egg hunt. And then for us of Polish descent, other European descent, um, there's a tradition of bringing your Easter foods to have them blessed on Holy Saturday for your Easter dinner. And so uh, at 12.15, we ask them to bring your basket full of all your goodies that you're going to bring for your Easter dinner and bring them here, put a little bow on the, on the basket and bring it all fancy up and bring it here and we'll bless all the Easter baskets at that time. Okay, so that's at 12.15. How many have seen that blessing before? How many have done that before? In life, okay. See, few of you have. Okay, so we need you to come. Okay, that is at 12:15 on Holy Saturday, and I think that's all the announcements. Am I right? Okay, and thank, you, thank you to all of our readers today. Uh, you all did a beautiful, all that saying. Thank you. It was just beautiful, and uh, these services are so meaningful. And um, it's just always a prayer as a priest that that all people that belong to a parish come during Holy Week because it is such a special time. Um, I know we all have people that stay away in our own families, and they might come for Easter, hopefully. But I just wish that everyone could partake in the special services. They're so beautiful, and the church offers us something special. I've been working on my homilies for weeks, so um, they're all done because I don't know what's going to happen with Father Pat. He's not doing well, everyone, just to let you know. Uh, Father Pat's very weak. Um, he sleeps most of the day, and so keep him in your prayers. I don't know what's going on, but um, please keep him in your prayers, okay? He's got lots of appointments this week, too, so um, just keep him in your prayers, okay? There's been a lot happening, and um, life isn't easy for none of us. We know that. All, all of us have our crosses, but we bring them to Jesus, and hopefully he'll help us get through Holy Week in a beautiful way and enliven us in faith so we can get through whatever comes our way, right? Okay, let's pray for each other. Have a beautiful week. Let's bow our heads praying for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's go forth from here, glorifying God during this holy week. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 510, Jesus Remember Me, number 510. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me 
When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom,